Good evening, everybody. It is September 18th, and today I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about the two most common tomato diseases that gardeners have to deal with, and that is early blight and septoria leaf spot, which from now on I'm just going to refer to as blight and leaf spot. I live on the coastal southeast, and both of those diseases are a huge problem in my garden. Last year, I discovered a way to kill blight and leaf spot. Now, blight and leaf spot are both funguses, so they can be killed, and they can actually be killed naturally. The problem is they're very difficult to kill. They're very robust. They come back quickly. The spores are everywhere throughout the uh, air once they start growing. But you can kill them, but you have to be very persistent in your treatment. And the other great thing is that these can be killed completely naturally using very inexpensive concentrates that are often uh, mostly organic. So that's a really cool thing. And one of the problems is the fungicides that you buy over the counter, they don't really kill blight and leaf spot. They don't kill fungal diseases. They just control them. They help slow their spread. And they're pretty good for, for prevention. Uh, they can drag out the amount of time it takes for you to get the disease. But once you have the disease, you're pretty much stuck with it. And I have discovered a method to kill it. About two weeks ago at this point, Hurricane Dorian ravaged my area. It brought in tremendous heat and tropical humidity. And in an effort to protect my garden, specifically my tomato plants, I had to untie all of my indeterminate tomatoes that were on vertical stakes and lay them on the ground. So they laid on the ground for almost 72 hours and uh, it was extremely wet during the storm. We got eight inches of rain. The humidity was just incredible. And uh, after that, the humidity lingered for an entire week, maybe even a little bit more. Every day, it was in the low 90s during the day and in the mid 70s at night. It was like a wet blanket. It was terrible. And all of my tomatoes, which were beautiful, beautiful and disease free before the storm, got absolutely ravaged by leaf spot. It looked like someone took a pepper grinder and just covered them in black pepper from head to toe. It was awful and most gardeners at this point would have absolutely given up because they look like lost causes. But uh, here we are roughly two weeks later and I, uh, they are almost completely cured. So over here, I have two products. I have simple 3% hydrogen peroxide that is right here. It's something like 88 cents for a quart from Walmart. It doesn't get any cheaper than that. And here, I have liquid copper fungicide that I purchased off of Amazon. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive, and I do have a link to this exact product right here in the description below. If you also go to my Amazon storefront, uh, I link to this product. It's on my page. I love this stuff. I've been using it for years, and it has absolutely great effects. So those there are your two key solutions in order to control and kill uh, fungal infections on your tomatoes and uh, many other crops as well. So, like I said, there are two key products that we're using here. Hydrogen peroxide, 3%. You must check the bottle and make sure that it's 3% for these concentrations to be valid. And liquid copper fungicide concentrate. Now, the, uh, for the liquid copper, uh, the concentrate, uh, the amount that I'm mixing is specific to this brand only. Uh, so if you get a different brand, you have to read the label and make sure that you are using the correct concentrations. This specific brand right here recommends a concentration for tomatoes of 3 to 5 teaspoons per gallon. So that's where my um, concentration of 4 teaspoons per gallon comes. I'm taking the middle number. So you have to read yours to make sure that that is accurate if you do not buy this brand. So. Uh, we have to make two different sprays here. We're going to make a peroxide spray and a copper spray. The good news is these are completely natural products, um, specifically hydrogen peroxide. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is what is going to kill the fungal infection. Copper is not. Copper is going to uh, create an environment that makes it difficult for the 
uh, for the fungal infections to take hold on the leaves. It's going to coat the leaves and it's going to sit on there and prevent further contamination. It's not going to kill it. This is the killing agent. And if you remember from chemistry class back in high school, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. It's basically water with an additional oxygen molecule. And hydrogen peroxide, when exposed to air, degrades very rapidly. H2O2 plus air equals H2O plus O2. So hydrogen peroxide in proximity with air, uh, it starts to react, it starts to break down, and it splits into water and oxygen gas. So the great thing about spraying your plants with hydrogen peroxide is you will have no chemical residue. The only thing left over after it breaks down will be water and air. So that's great, that's as natural as it comes. The problem with that reaction is that the reaction itself is very volatile. The splitting of the hydrogen peroxide into uh, water and oxygen, it generates a lot of energy and it is that energy that is killing your fungus. It's the chemical reaction of that hydrogen peroxide splitting apart chemically that is killing your fungus. So because of that, you have to be very, very careful with the concentration. Now my concentration for my peroxide spray is 12 tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water. I have worked my way up to this concentration. I have found this is the best concentration because it is as strong as I can get before I start damaging the plants. And this is true for my environment only. I have great results where I live with 12 tablespoons per gallon. If you have a stronger sun, if you have different air quality, if you have more pollutants in your air, more moisture, less moisture, whatever it may be, the concentration I am using may harm your plants. So please test spray. Only try this concentration on one plant. Or start with six tablespoons per gallon, work your way up to 12 slowly and incrementally. Don't just trust my concentrations. You want to test spray because if this winds up being too strong for your, for your level of uh, sun or your environment, you may wind up burning up all your plants. So please don't do that. So these concentrations, both here that I have listed, it's your job to test them out on your own. Do not go crazy. Do not take my word for it. The second bit of advice I want to give you, apply your sprays at sunset because sun reacts with sprays, uh, things that's, uh, chemicals that sit on your leaves, uh, sometimes the sunlight can damage them. So wait until the sun starts to set, then you go out and you apply your sprays. So as I mentioned, I have two sprays that I use on rotation here. We have 12 tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide per gallon. We have four teaspoons of liquid copper fungicide of this specific brand per gallon of water. Those are my two weapons that I'm using. And I've taken this time to put together this schedule so you can just pause this video and you can use all of these concentrations in this schedule, print it out and use it on your own. This is the schedule that I've followed and I've been able to mostly eradicate uh, fungal infections from my garden doing this. Now again, I have these all listed by nights because we want to spray this at sunset. We don't want to spray during the heat of the day. So when your plants are overtaken by a fungal disease, the first thing you want to do is you want to prune off as many of the diseased leaves as practical. Um, if the disease is overtaking the lower leaves of the plant, generally you want to cut them off. So the first thing you always want to do is prune, but you also can't hack the plant to nothing. So you have to use your best judgment and prune as much of the disease off that is practical. Um, because you're going to prune the plant heavily, it's very important that you fertilize heavily. I use miracle Grow Bloom Booster, which I also have linked in the description below uh, to help the plant recover. I also mix that with fish emulsion, but I'll get into that later. So the first night after you prune off the diseased leaves, you want to apply your peroxide spray. You want to coat the plant all over. Um, you want to make sure you especially get underneath the leaves because that is where the fungal infection tends to hang out. You want to let that sit on your plants overnight. It'll break down and dry. Night two, 24 hours later, you want to repeat this exact process. Apply more peroxide, uh, the peroxide spray on night two. So over those two nights, you're going to very heavily hit the plant with the hydrogen peroxide and that is going to do a lot to kill the fungus. 
Night three, you want to rotate in the copper spray at this concentration, four teaspoons per gallon. The copper spray needs to then sit on your plant for 48 hours. So if you have rain in the forecast, you're going to need to repeat this process here. Um, the, co the copper cannot get washed off by rain, so you need two dry days for it to sit on there and really start to affect the plant and, uh, and try to get that disease under control so it can't take another foothold. Um, after you've let that copper sit on there for, 20, for 48 hours and you've given the plant a little bit of a break, uh, hit it with peroxide again, because at this point the disease is probably not completely eradicated. Uh, once again, let it dry overnight. Apply copper again on night six. Let it sit on the plant for 72 hours. We're, we're giving it a little bit more time to sit on the plant. And then finally, uh, night nine, peroxide again. And then within this 10-day span, you can take a plant that is really hurting and full of, uh, of blight and leaf spot and within 10 days you can mostly cure it. And you're going to want to be pruning along the way. After this I'm going to take you outside and I'm going to show you what my plants look like after I follow this regimen because what's going to happen is uh, the blight and the leaf spot, they're, they're speckles all over your leaves. Once you follow this, the peroxide is going to start killing off the um, it's going to start killing off the infection, and it's going to leave holes in your leaves where the infection used to be. And I'm going to take you out back, and I'm going to show you what those holes look like. So uh, this is a very rough schedule. If within 10 days the disease is not completely under control, uh, spray it with peroxide again. Go with the peroxide and then copper every 72 hours schedule. Once you have it under control, uh, in order to maintain healthy plants throughout the season, I recommend hydrogen peroxide once a week and then the copper spray at the minimum concentration for my fungicide, which is three teaspoons per gallon, and then let it sit on there all week. If you maintain this schedule, rotating in the copper and the peroxide, you can usually keep your plants uh, relatively disease-free and under control at least until the heat of July and August uh, if you live in a really humid climate like mine. All right, everyone, it's a little windy out here, so bear with me as best as you can. Uh, this used to be the disease all over my plant. So here was the leaf spot. As you can see, there are holes in the plant, and the holes in the plant is from the uh, hydrogen peroxide killing off the disease. This is pretty consistent as you go up. These were absolutely covered in leaf spot. It was, it was terrible. It looked like freckles all over the plant. But you can see, as I look at all of these leaves, all of these holes, those holes used to be the disease ravaging the plant. But now that the disease is dying off, look how big those spots were. Um, now that the disease is dying off, the plants are starting to look really good. So as you can see, I don't have it completely under control yet, but I'm making a lot of progress. These plants look like total goners, and I know I'm making a lot of progress because this is new growth, and all of the new growth that you see up top here is disease-free. If, uh, if the disease was winning, this new growth on my plants would all be covered in leaf spot. So that's making me feel really good. Uh, this is actually sunburn from applying uh, BT when it was still too hot out. So that's what happens if you apply sprays during the heat. You don't want that to happen. So that's why I'm saying you really want to make sure that you spray at night. Again, here's the new growth up top. It all looks very good, very healthy, very green. Whereas the growth down here, it was covered in leaf spot. But now you can see the holes that are all throughout uh, the tomato plant. That's where the disease used to be uh, taking hold. You can see how bad the leaf spot was inside here. And it, it still is bad, but you can tell that leaf spot is dying because it's turning almost like a rust color. So I still need to go through and spray these with my hydrogen peroxide spray tonight because they look so bad. Um, now remember, as the disease dies off, you are going to need to prune your plants. So this dwarf tomato here, this used to be leaves down to here, but because it was so riddled with disease, I had to prune all of those lower leaves off. 
I had to leave the top because your leaves are your solar panels for the plants and they have to uh, get energy from the sun to grow. I hit them really hard with a concentration of Miracle uh, Grow Bloom Booster at uh, one tablespoon per gallon uh, mixed in with uh, fish emulsion at a rate of three tablespoons per gallon. And now all of this lighter green growth, that's all new. As you can see, there is no disease on any of these leaves. This plant was split right in half during Hurricane Dorian. This whole piece got broken off, but the plant is recovering just fine. That's all new growth since the hurricane. And over here, I'm getting my first fall tomatoes. So that's how I know the plants are doing well. They're actually setting fruit. I have a few up here. We're finally getting a break from the hot temperatures. So I'm going to go inside and I'm going to mix up some of the peroxide spray and I'm going to show you how to apply it to your plants. So down here we have a simple two gallon pump sprayer and it is filled with a concentration of 12 tablespoons per gallon of hydrogen peroxide. So I'm going to treat this plant right here, uh, right there, and I'm going to spray it down, make sure to get nicely underside all of the leaves. I'm going to use the fan setting on the sprayer to do this. And you want to make sure that you get it from all angles, underneath, on top, side to side, in the front, behind. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Simply coat the tops of all the leaves until the leaves are soaking wet and dripping. Make sure to get underside all the leaves because a lot of the fungal diseases hang out under, uh, underneath because they're protected from the sun and the sun tends to kill the fungus. So a lot of the worst infection is actually underneath the leaves. Make sure you get it from the other side, underneath. and from the back. So we wanna let that plant drip off and sit overnight and dry off. And then tomorrow, we will simply hit it with the copper spray. And when we hit it with the copper spray, we will let the copper spray sit on there the number of days based on the schedule I just gave you and that's all there is to it. Using these sprays at the concentrations I explained, I was able to literally bring my tomato plants back from the brink of death. And now they're looking healthy, and with the nights cooling off in the fall, I think I'm going to get some really nice fruit set. Everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for future updates and more videos like these. I know this was pretty detailed, so if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below and I will respond to them as quickly as possible. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all again next time.